Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. We're on live. Five. No, we're on the, like, here we go. Five, four, four three, three two. <coughs> this week on the program, with everything going on right now at our border with kids wrapped up in tinfoil tortillas like space burritos and assumptions of a mass murderer's race based on patterns, let's not forget about the real question on all our minds today. Is David really wearing a cowboy hat right now? This earth is for emergencies <laughs> only. Jesus. Right. That's right. <laughs> He's wearing a cowboy hat. Uh, it doesn't matter anyways. Uh, later, we're going to read more fact checks. And finally, Project Veritas Canon won't be stopped. Welcome, you guys. This is another episode of Emergency Exit Podcast. This is episode... No. This is for no, you, you played it once already. You <laughs> yeah, got to just whatever. roll with the punches there. All right. Main screen. There it is. Uh, let's go. Uh, no, this is episode 198. Today is March. Dude, I was just stumbled because I said 198. That means we're two episodes away wow. from 200 episodes. That's insane. And so I wanted to gather some clips hmm. of all of our best and funniest stuff. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions... Uh, with uh, I don't know with, what if, what is some of the funniest stuff that we've done that you want to see aired again? Just all in like uh, like a super clip, like show. a super clip. You know how all your favorite sitcoms would have that um, clip show? Was it was it maybe some of the rapid news that you like? I was talking shit. Yeah, was it ra- oh the rapid you know news? I mean? We got some rapid news. We got Lowe's doing the ones and twos every now and then. You know what I mean? That's right. Well, let's get back to uh, the the show here because we got off track many times already, mm-hmm. and well, we need to get back on track. And as I said, this is episode one hundred ninety eight. Today is March twenty six, two hundred wow. two thousand and twenty one. It is again Freaky Friday, ten on Ooh. ten in our floating tin can. Far above the world. Yeah. Well, they see you got a little different uh, tone. Okay. That's so not good. bad. What can I say? You got to work on it, but it's all right. I went seal. I am Los. My preferred adjectives are magical mm-hmm. and awesome. That's and joining true. me as always is exactly Crocodile Davy <laughs> Aguilar. Bling, bling. His uh, preferred adjectives are warm and cuddly. Those are true. Those are facts. And making sure we're streaming live is Brandon, the hard hat Mitchells, uh, who his preferred pronouns are just hey. <laughs> hey. 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 That's right. That's it. There's a lot to go, a lot to get through today, as I said in the opening here. We've got uh, we'll talk about the kids at the border wrapped up in tinfoil tortillas. Kids in cages. Uh, we've got assumptions. We're gonna make an ass of everybody, mm-hmm. uh, but mostly you. But Biden's totally not rehearsed first press conference, and uh, maybe we'll get some to some local news, some other news, and of course we got to get into Project Veritas oh, yeah. and their win against mainstream media. All you have to do is just do your job, and you don't have to worry about getting sued and losing for defamation. But we got a few things to get into first. Why don't we get into the Brew World Order, Brandon? (sighs) It's the Brew World Order. What's that thing that Matthew McConaughey does in uh, Wolf of Wall Street? I don't remember that scene. Oh, wait, are you doing Doug? All right, we've got this brew order today. What do we have? We've got... Road Trip Snacks by Panther Island Brewing. Panther Island. By, in Fort Worth here. Now, this is an ale mm-hmm. brewed with beaver nuggets. That's yes. right. Bucky's Beaver Nuggets. Beaver Nuggets. I would imagine this is a beer that they were trying to say, we're going to get all the, f- all the we gonna, flavors. We're going to get all them flavors. All the flavors of a road trip. Mm-hmm. We're going to put them all into one beer. And, of course, no trip down I-35 is... exactly. No trip is complete without a trip to Bucky's. Very true. Even if you're just going there to take a leak, or you're going there to just get some uh, jerky, uh-huh. their world famous jerky. Either way, you gotta you gotta go. Yeah, for it's it. the best. You just um, gotta stop to see it. We all got to drink this already, mm-hmm. and we are re- prepared to give our ratings. So, yeah. Brandon, why don't we start with you? 
Boom, boom, All right. boom. Uh, I did uh, not like this beer. Just just going to flat out no. did not like it. You don't like Couple it here. You don't like it there. I don't like this beer anywhere. anywhere. Nope. Not on my face, not on my chest, not in my mouth. It not is not <laughs> the best. It is not the something, best. Something, something, something. I will not drink it in the rain. No matter trying to run from the pain, <laughs> I simply poured it down the drain. There you go. <laughs> What's your rating, bud? Um, can we rate a zero or is Ooh. one the lowest? No, you can't do zero. Okay, so it has to be just a one? Yeah. Yeah, it's a one. One, mm. that's right. It's a one for me, dog. So, the lowest you can get. So I'm going to give it a three. A three. And mainly because I, I like... I feel like it would be a five if I had like a handful of caramel corn. Well, you picked this out today. I did. This is five mm-hmm. alcohol by volume, by the way, and mm-hmm. you picked this out because it's got a quite cool looking can, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. that's what I would probably go with. It's a cartoon drawing of a somebody wearing a cowboy hat, and of course, uh, got their dog on their side yep. and just dropping a bunch of beaver nugs up in his face. I didn't know what He's beaver nuggets band. were. You didn't know what beaver nuggets? I were? did. I did not know. Oh man, I love beaver nuggets. I like to get the. The spicy ones, the sweet and spicy. Mm. Well, those are great. Well, I knew I knew they were from Bucky's. I did not know that they made it with Bucky. Oh, by Beaver the way, nuggets. it says here, Beaver Nuggets mm-hmm. is a reg- registered trademark of Bucky's Limited. Better watch out. Which is not affiliated, or does it sponsor or endorse bum, this bum, product? Bum. Wop, 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 wop. All right, you said three. That's right. Yes, I did. All right. Well, this co- this 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 drink. Mm-hmm. It tastes like coffee, cigarette ashes, and Gatorade oh. bottles with piss in them. Wow. Yes. It. It. Well, if they're going for road trip. They. They really hit this. It also tastes like asphalt. Now that I t- think about it, mm. it leaves an aftertaste of asphalt. Right. Wow. You said coffee, so maybe it could coffee be asphalt. Coffee and asphalt. Yeah. Um, this beer is gross in all the right ways. Ooh. Because it's not bad for tasting like asphalt, and I take no pride in giving this rating. Three, that's Jeez. right. That's it. Three, three, and one. Very low ratings very on this low. beer. You're not going to see it again. Probably not going to see it no. in the Brew World Order Tournament of Beers this Sadly. year. But that being said, that's another Brew World Order. It's the Brew World Sounds like I'm putting a filter on it, huh? Bro, it sounds like you're breaking it down, brother. <laughs> All right. All right, let's get into the next thing. Let's we got, do this thing. Got to get these out of the way. Got to get yep. these out of the way. Probably don't even have to do them anymore these days, but why not? We love it. Let's get into bonsai and bourbon. Bourbon and bonsai, that's right. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. bum, bum, bum. All right, hey, bonsai and bourbon. Man. So first of all, I've got this Carmona, this Carmona Rutuza, also known as a Fukin tea tree. A Fukin tea this tree. This has uh, been on the show many times. It's, uh, it's, it's a favorite. This is uh, something that got repotted about a month or two ago, about a month. Just before the the big frost happened, I think mm. no, it happened after the frost. I can't remember, but either way, I made a video of it, which mm. is uh, is it playing in the background here? There it is. Yeah, so w- I repotted this, and as you can see, uh, I also gave it a good, healthy pruning, and it was bare. Remember, mm. you saw this a yeah. couple weeks ago, and it was just there was barely any leaves on, just a few baby leaves. It was a nude, and then boom, this thing. I told you it's gonna boom back up. I'm fertilizing it. It is springtime. Yep. This is a one of my absolute favorite ones. Can you so go to good. the very end or towards the very end where it's like nearly buried? Because you can see I also defoliated the thing. I took wow. all the all the little petals off of it, all the leaves off of it. Blink, 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 blink. Awesome. Blink. Um, and it is doing really well. It's growing. It's loving spring. Loving spring. Loving spring. Uh, who doesn't Ooh. love spring? I love spring. It's terrific. Terrific spring. You can put a little bathing suit. Maybe get, it's a maybe terrific spring. You get a little bit of tan lines on that. Getting some tan lines. That's right. Um, uh, just to show you guys some progress, I'm not sure if you can even see it with the green screen because it's uh, green, obviously, and it's a uh, fresh green. I think what we need to do is get a blue screen, Brando. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's for an, for another time. Um, yeah, you can't really even tell on the thing. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, maybe we should take pictures of these beforehand. Mm. But this is working well. 
It is spring. I'm loving it. Uh, there are so many plants. I'm buying plants galore. Got a salsa garden. Dude, my wife, my wife, my wife is buying plants also. Like yeah. she's just getting ready. Isn't it? Isn't it great? You said you guys yeah. are growing lettuce. How's that going? It's going good, dude. That thing. Tamaran. I mean, yeah, yeah. Was, we got tamarind and all that in also, You know, so we're gonna have a garden, we're gonna have a little garden of ourselves. But yeah, dude, that fucking lettuce is growing like crazy. How are you growing it? Is, she, you guys so have a patio. She, no, she she just took the lettuce the, and cut it. Oh, okay. And then she just put it in water and it's fucking sprouting yeah, out. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. That's how you can just get like you can keep getting money out of your yeah. lettuce. Mm-hmm. You can do that with most most plants. Yeah, too, that, and know? that's what she's doing. We were doing that with uh, cilantro and other stuff like that, but because of the cold, everything fucking died. So uh, we're, we're regrowing shit. Cilantro is uh, is something I have in my garden, and before it frost uh, mm-hmm. froze over. I mean, I had this giant bush of cilantro. I couldn't you eat have it as you much. Ha- you have a bush. It was a bush. Oh, it was a bush. <laughs> Make a bush of cilantro. <laughs> you got to get that tasty bush. The tasty bush. You come to it, you say, oh, you're very tasty bush. You're so tasty. Can I come to you and take uh, some of your bush? I, w- I want to rub your bush on my face. Take it easy with your bush. <laughs> Please bring it. Come, come, come. It hurts my cheek. I, uh, sometimes people think it tastes like soap. If I, are we going into the Godfather <laughs> It tastes like a soap. It tastes like soap. I don't like cilantro. Why you bring me cilantro? I don't like it. It tastes <laughs> like a soap. It tastes like shit. It tastes like soap. But, but it's looking so good, man. And as yeah, you can see yeah. from here, well, you can. <laughs> it looks the same to the folks at home. Mm-hmm. But believe me, believe me, it looks awesome. It is budding all over. There are new shoots all over this thing. Yep. As I would, as I predicted, this thing is just resilient. I wait, I cut up a few of the big roots off of it. Bye, hey, Lose. Later, Lose. Well. That was bourbon. I mean, that was bonsai. Let's talk about the bourbon. We are once again drinking Copper's, uh, Cooper's, Cooper's Mark. Cooper's Mark. A small batch. Uh, it was good. 91 proof. So a little higher than uh, Very a, delicious. Uh, your regular on-the-counter, over-the-counter. Yeah. Uh, so let's drink it. Mm, delicious. All right. Mm. That's bonsai and bourbon. That's right. <laughs> bonsai and bourbon coming at you. That's right. Bonsai and bourbon going to... Treat you that track. Go 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 bonsai. Go cap bourbon. Bonsai. Bourbon. Gotta get him with the bonsai. Bourbon. Ooh yeah. Get him. Bonsai and bourbon. Coming at you. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that, everyone. You guys can give us a call. Our number's on the screen down there. Eight seven five eight three zero eight seven five zero six three seven. Just read the number on the down there, and I'll tell you what. All right. Now to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, the ne- n- nitty gritty. So, nitty-gritty. if you guys were like me, you keep up with the important things that happen in America. And yeah. uh, one of the most important things that happened in America last uh, yesterday, last yesterday, um, <laughs> was David got a new cowboy hat. I did. Uh, yeah, why'd did. you get a cowboy hat? Well, we were wi- with uh, my mom. With well, we're with family. Yes. And uh, and they were giving him away, and my wife thought I looked uh, good in that cowboy hat, and I felt like you know what, I'll keep it. Is it a Stetson? Uh, no, it is. Um, Let me see that. I don't though. know what it is. It says. Uh, it's a great hat. Oh, Tassie Crusher Collection. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, Outback Trading, bro. Outback. So I mean, it definitely has and an Australian feel. And look to at it. that bend. It's not even a cowboy. Look hat. at that bend. You That's know, you could you, like, bro. If I could fit a burrito here and a taco here, bro. Can you? So pull when up I'm walking, I got my burrito, my taco. I'm hungry. Mm. Well, this needs to be dipped. This got a thing, so you can put some uh, bean dip. Yeah, or this, this this is for the for the dip. And then you have the nachos while you're walking, nachos. and you're dipping and walking at the same time, bro. Uh, it's not going to soak through the felt. It's a taco nacho Can you look up uh, Coyote Peterson? Because uh, you're wearing the same kind of hat he has. Uh, and I want everyone to take a look at this this hat there. It, it, it's, it's it's quite handsome on you. It is. I, I really enjoy it. Here, let well, me put it on Take off your stupid beanie and, and, and wear it like a man. Like a man! Be a man! Boom. Yeah, so you got an Outback hat like him, see? But his is made of leather. All right, all right, mate. All this right. Guy, this Gov. guy's crazy. Hey, Gov. Let's see. How's it going, mate? See, he goes more with a like a, a uh-huh. dip right there. I know. So that the water can drain down. That's a leather hat, believe it or not. Bro, I need to get one of those, man. I got to switch up my hat game. Probably stinks so bad, that hat. You think he made it himself? Uh, I don't know about that. You think he murdered that turtle and made a hat out of it? Dude, this guy gets, like, bit by, like, ants and wasps, you know, just to get stung by them. Well, howdy. Howdy, yo. He's pretty crazy. He's, my name he's is. cool. I've my always name like, is Dirty Dave. How do you get a job like that? You know, you become a biologist, right? That's probably what these guys all do. They're all biologists by, you know, by degree. And this guy has a love has a love for uh, 
Bro. animals. And then you, he films it, goes out there and talks about it. And all you got to do is Steve buy the Irwin, hat, so. buy the hat, take some pictures of the animals. People will take you serious. Okay. People will take you fucking serious. You post at least 36 pictures on your Instagram with a hat like that next to different animals. People are going to be like, that's an animal, you man. You got to also have that vest that has like tons of pockets. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, this sounds sexy. All right. All okay. Right, back to you. Thank you, y'all. This is my cowboy. Uh, I want to apologize to the Liberty Ladies. Uh oh. Um, yeah. I, Bro, this is your first apology video? Is yeah. this your official apology video? It's official. Oh, shit. I'm to understand that they're pretty mad with me at the moment because uh, I said some things that I don't regret because they're true and mm. everything I said was true. I'm just sorry that you're upset. I'm doing the old uh, Ilhan Imar uh, uh, thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry that you're offended by my, uh, my actions and my rhetoric. My rhetoric. Um, they're not mad at you, bro. They're totally mad they're, at me. And I'm sorry if you're mad at me, but I stick to what I said and, uh, you know, you know, they know be, beef be better. We're all libertarians, bro. Yeah. I'm not the one trying to divide it. I'm not, I'm just trying to say like, Hey, the, I, w- troll is cooling, but don't go out there and try to pretend we got to be I'm like, we're going to rehash this again. We got to be like the bonsai. <laughs> don't try to pretend like you went out there to fucking, you know, talk to these people rationally. You went out there to fucking troll with them <laughs> and admit it. That's fine. That's cool. All right. Sorry about this. Uh, but sorry for calling it out. Maybe it's my fault that I shouldn't have like called it out. Um, but you know, I have a talk show and I only see these guys about uh, one to two times a week. And so we like to enjoy. Our sometimes little, we just uh, we, you know we get down the, and talk. The, the liquor, you know, the liquor speaks for itself. You know, we're not always on teleprompter. Oh, you know? like Mr. Joe Biden, Mr. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Well, he was totally uh, uh, to, to not rehearsed up for this press conference that he had here. And we'll read. Let's go to some articles, man. Let's get into some news, Did man. Did you see his flashcards? Oh, yes, there were. Uh, I think uh, maybe we can pull them up while you're uh, scrolling through this here. But let's go down to the Daily Wire's article. Fact checking Biden's disastrous first press conference. Now, mind you, these are conservatives at the Daily Wire. Yes, they make no. Uh, they do make mention that they are conservative at all costs. You know, that's, that's how they're going to be front and with their bias. So mm-hmm. take their their fact checks for what they are. Uh, factual. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. Factual. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, just show me some stories where Daily Wire said anything. That's true. That, um, they've never had to retract anything. Yeah. No, I think that they've re- retracted yeah, they, things, but I mean, they haven't. Uh, they, they're they're up front with their with. With everything. And they're biased. They're, they're up front uh, they're with their bias. They're from biased. They give you news, um, but they're not so biased that you can't read it and consider it news. And at least when they do fact checks, these things are more... Pretty uh, accurate. I could trust them, actually, more than I trust PolitiFact. 100%. Uh, I could trust them more than I could trust uh, Scopes, uh, Sco- uh, Snopes in a lot of cases. Mm. Uh, anyone that we've had on the show who said partially true or uh, <laughs> uh, half true or partially false, uh-huh. and those two being the same thing... Uh, pisses me off. Yeah, 100%. Uh, even though they're two different companies that have their fact check, we don't need a bunch of companies making a. There should be a fucking standard. One to five batch rights. That's it. Why can't it be this? Like fact check. That so, should be. You know what? I said I didn't want to be measured in feet anymore. I want to be measured in that's rights. And that, that, you know what? I don't know if we had that on the air earlier, but David we, said uh, talking about people and their and how tall they are by feet is offensive it's to offensive. him who has small feet. Well, because I'm short, and, short. I, and I don't want to be measured by feet anymore. Oh, uh, sure. And so I think we should go five. That's right. That's right. Okay. How how how, how confident are you to be? Hey, you're five. That's right. People how go. Awesome what the is that? fuck did you just say? I'm seven. That's right. On Thursday, and this comes from the Daily Wire's Ian Haworth. 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 On Thursday, after going his first two months in office without holding a press conference, the longest streak in modern wow. U.S. history. Jabadin finally answered questions from reporters in the White House. Biden first delivered a short speech celebrating his administration's achievements regarding COVID-19. We're the best. All thanks to Trump. Uh, the, our admission, we're the first to do it. <laughs> Greatest. Nobody else has done as much as we've done in our first uh, 50 days in 50 office. Days. That's right. Uh, he, before, he let's see, he was... Uh, delivering a short speech celebrating his administration's achievements regarding COVID-19 before calling on pre-selected mm-hmm. members of the press to field various questions. Pre-selected members. Mm. Both his speech and answers to questions from journalists were replete 
with falsehoods. Yep. Let's fact check the president's first press conference since his inauguration on January 20th. Let's go. All right. Biden claims that the migration increases, that migration increases during winter months under, uh, were worse under Trump. I'm reading like a dick today. <laughs> Biden claims that migration increases during winter months worse or were worse under Trump. Yeah. Still reading it like a dick. Basically what he was saying, and it sort of made sense when I listened to it. He said, uh, well, listen, people come, I mean, come on. Come uh, on, man. January, February, March. They keep coming out. Uh, he's uh, he's very much. We got to make him sound yes. like Obama mixed with uh, the Crypt Keeper. No, uh, <laughs> 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 with Christopher Walken. Hey, uh, hey, uh, no, that's hey Fauci. Guys. Fauci yeah. was uh, <laughs> Christopher Chris Walken. Walken. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, yes, uh, you gotta you gotta do it like this. He made a point though, uh, like a slow it, Obama. You're a not slow gonna Obama. see caravan of people coming uh, like on in December. Yeah. Or. or or even uh, November or something. It's too cold. Yeah. It's too cold. There was a come. fucking snowstorm this year. And I do remember like caravans being around in like Januarys and Februarys mm -hmm. and Marches. So that was always that was always happening. So what he said there sort of was true, I guess. So Biden compared the rate of increase in person persons attempting to cross the borders in 2021 and mm. 2019 in an apparent attempt to deflect criticism for the ongoing border crisis. Uh, it's actually border challenges. Daily Wire. See their bias. Obviously, well, you see their bias well, when they write. Did, did you hear? I don't know if you heard. Uh, if you, we watched his lies, but did you hear how how the uh, how the reporter phrased it? It was kind of like saying, uh, you know, everybody's saying it's because you're so nice, and that's why uh, Mexicans are coming over because they know you're welcoming. Oh, he, well, well, he, we'll get into that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, we'll get into that. But he also did say that he goes, well, this is what I what I was hearing was that everyone starts coming because they, they know it's me. A little bit go, slower. Hey, Joey a little B. bit slower. Slower Obama. You're being too enthusiastic. You hey, but, you know, they said, hey, it's me. <laughs> President Iraq. <laughs> President Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> this ongoing border crisis saying that there has been a 28% increase between January and February mm -hmm. of 2021 compared to 31% increase during the same period in 2019. Mm. That's what he's talking about. Let's go down. Firstly, this is false, as noted by the Associated Press. Quote, according to statistics published by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, authorities encountered 9,457 children without a parent in February, a 61% increase from January, wow. not 28%. <laughs> Even if Biden's claim was accurate, this also ignores the fact that the starting point is far higher, higher than uh, it's far higher under Biden. Mm -hmm. The starting point is far higher under Biden in 2019. And that's hyperlinked, by the way, you can go yeah. to that on your own time in 2019, uh, 58,317 people attempted to cross the border in January and 76,545 attempted to cross the border in February, a 31% increase. In January 2021, however, 78,000 people attempted to cross the border. In this context, 34.5 more people attempted wow. to cross the border under Biden administration than under the Trump administration wow. in January of 2021, comparative, uh, comparable to uh, 2019 there. Damn. That's right. good math right there. You Let's see how they try to sneak away with the math? Yes. And they just proved them wrong. It just proves them wrong yep. there. Let's go to the next one. Biden claims that the, quote, vast majority of families are being sent back. During his speech, Biden claimed that the United States is, quote, sending back the vast majority of the families. Uh, you know the thing. You know the families. Unquote. Uh, you know the families. And they According just, uh, <laughs> forget about it. Uh, yeah, I, I, should I keep talking about this? <laughs> should I keep going? No, you don't want to hear you me. Want you, hear. Don't you don't want to hear me anymore. No, 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 I'm talking should I get Kamala up no, here? I'm talking too much. I should just shut Kamala, up. Kamala, come up here. They want you, you instead of me. Kamala. Just shut the hell up, Biden. You don't, you don't need to be talking to yourself. Shut up and sign, talk, the, no, they're, sign they're, the fucking paper, Biden. They're, they're watching you, Joe. They're looking at you, Joe. Say something, Joe. Joe Joe's like, where's the little girl so I can sniff her? Is that a real question? Come on, man. <laughs> you want to fight? You want to you do push-ups? You want to go? You and me. We'll go run up and down this stairs. Let's go. Let's go fucking run. I ain't no punk bitch. Nope. According to CPD data, this is false. Of the almost 20,000 apprehensions of families in the border in February, less than 50% were returned under for, uh, Title 42. Wow. Uh, I don't know if Title 42 is, but uh, I think that's the stay in Mexico policy. That's the uh, Juli Julian Gonzalez. 
I don't know. Just, you you, you remember Julian bitch. Gonzalez, all right? The little Cuban boy? Uh, 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 Back Elliot in the 90s? Gonzalez? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, yeah I remember. Elliot. Course. Elliot Gonzalez. Is it Elliot? Julian? Uh, I don't. <laughs> Maybe that's his I just fucking, name. I just fucking made name up. Maybe that's his name. I don't know. Uh, that's Mar- my cousin. Okay. My bad. What is Title 42? He's looking it up right now. I think it's the stay in Mexico policy. Uh, from just real quick right here. Title 42. Border title for border law. Bob, title 42. What? Is it where they, where they, where they, you got to send them back it's or more receive of a them? health check? I think is what it's. Oh, is it, uh, is it, uh, cause of COVID? If they yeah. have COVID. They gotta, they gotta yeah. send them back. Yeah. Oh, is that right? I think so. Um, yeah. Expulsions. If they have a, uh, like symptoms and shit of COVID-19 that they got to send them back. Is that title 42? Biden, uh, you know, we're we're doing our research yeah, on the air like terrible. Well, and that's journalists. I, I think that's what it is, because because even then, I remember there was criticism for Biden for allo- for allowing more border crossings and shit to come in, even though that uh, they were testing positive for covid. And it's like, why would you let more of them come in, even if they have covid like you're going to sp- continue to spread it if you're trying to stop it? Right, yeah. and I don't. I, I'm not a border expert. I, I, you guys already know how I feel about borders. Well, I grew up next to the border. Yeah, right I next mean, to it. It was my back door. And it's a very non-libertarian, um, non-libertarian stance that I have on the border. What? what what's your stance on the well, border? Libertarians are for open borders. Ah, uh, so is that if you if you got a wet back, send them back? No, no, no. Um, and I get what they're saying, you know, the fair trade and, you know, fair uh, f- uh, movement of people. Mm-hmm. It should, I get that. If there weren't so many – but the thing is I don't think it would be even an issue, and I would be for open borders if we had, you know, the reason why we have bad people coming over is because there's drugs, you mm-hmm. know, and the drugs are illegal here. So they come from other places, mm-hmm. you know, and the border is one place. If there were drugs weren't illegal – they wouldn't have to worry about bringing their bad stuff here. If guns were something that every woman kept in their uh, in their purse just in case, mm-hmm. you know, in that kind of world, the libertarian world, um, we'd be very wild west. Yeah. Well, the thing is also the pe- I don't know if that's good or not. The reason that we're getting more of the bad people from other countries instead of the good is because the w- the good ones are going the right r- route, and they trickle in. When the bad ones are flooding in and we're seeing more of them, you know, and that's why you need these policies. That's why you need a thing like a border wall. That's why you need, uh, you know, better relationships between other nations and countries so everyone could mitigate their 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 borders and their gates. Yeah. And look, I, I mean, if in, a, in a perfect libertarian world, in my view, um, it would have borders. You know, I would mm-hmm. want to have a gate around my my property. Yeah, I, I want 100%. that. And it's not just to keep bad people out. You know, that's the thing. We just don't, we want to be able to, and you know, I think most people should be able to come in. Um, granted, we know who they are. Mm-hmm. There's some sort of identification. I don't think, I don't think IDs are a very libertarian thing, pro libertarian thing either. IDs, like, why does the government need to know? Which I get it, but I think the things that we've evolved into, we wouldn't need to have um, people. Uh, printing money Mm -hmm. Uh, we couldn't live in this uh, primitive world that everybody wants to live in Uh, at some point uh, people started inventing things and making it so that we wanted it and they didn't just give it to us when it's not just that it's also i mean people are corrupt people are evil people are bad you know like the fact that you need a receipt you know the fact that they had to create something like a receipt to prove your purchase Shows that people were lying, stealing, cheating, and and taking things that they weren't supposed to. Say, you know what I mean? So, so that that's the issue. The issue, you know, the issue is we don't live in a perfect world. The issue is, you know, people are greedy and want money or they want fame or success, and we've made it to where we idolize the people who have the most money. You know what I mean? What if we idolize people who were the most kind? Or the most generous, or the most friendly, instead of doing things like currency. Here, pull that microphone like oh. to your side a little bit so that this they way? can see oh. your pretty little Hispanic face. Hola. See, see, see. No, and you're right, uh, but uh, we literally spend our whole day. We spend a third of our day mm-hmm. or more um, working for money in order yeah. to live and do things. Yep. You know, this is not something that. We needed to do originally. Mm-hmm. I mean, this all we had to do was wake up, find some food, yep. and uh, 
make sure we have a place to sleep that's warm. That's it. That's kill, all we had to do. Kill, you know, kill some animals, build a fire, eat, sleep, you know, have sex, make babies, raise them up. Right. And, you know what I mean? And protect them and yeah. make sure that they grow mm-hmm. up straight, you know, and right. Um, not like gay or straight, but like straight and narrow. But you know, it's funny because even last week we were, we were we were reading about how er- oh, was it Plato, Aristotle, or Socrates, one of those guys who was a, was against the arts, and it's almost for reasons like this because then that person, because they're the artist, they m- get to make up the price of their talent in a sense, rather than just giving it freely. That is interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's how art is. Mm-hmm. Art is totally like you dictate your own price, and the market doesn't dictate that. Now, the market does do that eventually mm-hmm. when it's out of your own hands. The artist never gets that benefit. The yeah. artist ever always gets to make his own price, and he gets to negotiate on that negotiate well, un- until until his his art is replicated, and then and then. But and how does how do you measure somebody's uh, painting like? You have to look at the work uh, uh, and the detail, and there's so much to. Um, that's why some of these old ass bonsais mm-hmm. that look amazing that you've seen a million times on TV and such, uh, they are thousands of thousands of dollars. Well, well, I think that's where culture comes in. Culture is the rightful assumption or the rightful appraisal to art, right? Culture, in a right way, will appraise thing correctly right so so if somebody has a beautiful singing voice you know how to judge a good singing voice from a bad singing voice and so you create a culture of good singers or whether it's building a house or whether it's you know bonsais or beer right you dictate th- these are good flavors these are bad flavors therefore you create good beer with these flavor profiles you know what i mean but and and so it goes from the creative person to building a creative culture but but again because we're evil people we then say Oh well, I made this, therefore I deserve this praise for it. Other th- rather than saying this is, th- I should give you this freely because I've also received it freely, right? Like the person who makes the beer, you know, did he make the barley? No, like you plant the seed and the barley is formed. You know what I mean? So yeah, now in our day, because we live in this age where you need money and currency, it happens. Well, well, I mean, well put, and yeah, I don't see anybody giving any money to the. To the sun, right? Nobody's hooking up. Uh, but we are pricing water, pricing water, yeah. right? Bottled water. Yeah, uh, bottled water is a something that everybody, when they heard of it, they went, "Yeah, who's going to buy a bottle yeah. of water?" Yep, it's literally free. Yep, just open your tap, and somehow it's something that we all do. It's a billion dollar industry. Billion dollar industry. Man. Billion dollars. I made a billion dollars. Had Trump water in slap every my, Trump hotel. Slap my name on it. Slap my name. Slap my face. Slap my water. <laughs> Trump water. It's delicious. It's delicious. All right, let's go into the next claim. Make water great again. Uh, <laughs> Biden claims make water great again. Ma- uh, Wagga. 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 Water again, great again. Um. Biden claims that the Trump administration shut down the number of available beds at border centers. This is a false claim. Uh-oh. Now, I like that they say this is a false claim. Mm-hmm. There's not, well, this is not a false. That's sort of true. Missing context mm-hmm. now. Okay, um, this is a false claim. And one, th- and one previously made by Bi- Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, Uh-oh. which was fact-checked by the New York Times. It's like they're using they're using their own, yep. they're using your own words against you mm-hmm. here, uh, as if like New York Times works for Biden or something. But the way that they they kiss his ass and oh yeah, it's and hate deep. Republicans, you might as well be working for Biden there. They kiss his wrinkly butt. Quote: The Biden administration, the Biden administration is struggling to find space for migrant children and teenagers who have recently arrived at the border with some sleeping on gym mats foil sheets in processing facilities as they wait to be transferred to shelters contracted uh, with the Office of Refugee Resettlement. Mm. But Mr. Mr. Klain, I keep wanting to say Mr. McClain, is wrong that the backlog is because of the previous administration drastically downsized monthly bed capacity, the Times wrote. When the Obama administration faced its own surge of migrant children, the refugee agency increased its monthly bed capacity 
capacity to about 8,000 beds in the 2015 fiscal year Mm -hmm. from about 2,000 in the 2011 fiscal year, according to a government accountability office report. Biden, under the Trump, uh, I don't know why I said Biden, (laughs) under the Trump administration, it's just so much to keep up with, Biden, Trump, Trump, Biden, Biden, Trump. Under the Trump administration, monthly bed capacity fell to about 7,000 in October uh, 2017, but grew to over 16,000 by December 2018. By Mr. Trump's last full month in office, December 2020, Monthly bed capacity was at 13,000, hardly a record low. And Look, I only have one thing to say. Wow. Ooh, wow. I only have one thing to say. Who built the cages, Joe? Who built the cages, Who Joe? Who built the cages? Who has the burritos? <laughs> Who's got the burritos now, Joe? <laughs> Space burritos. I like to look at them, and they're all stacked up like the the mm. tamale man came to town. I bet you it was Joe Biden's wrap him up idea to wrap them up that way, so he can call for one, and then he wraps he unwraps it like Ooh, I you got know, a little Mexican. You girl. know when Maria comes uh, comes to work uh, during <laughs> Christmas time, and she's got a big bag of yep. tamales wrapped up in tin foil. You look down and you go, "Cualquieres." That's a migrant crisis right hey, there, bro. Today, my, my wife and I went to the tamale house. It's that place an, sucks. It's not, don't, bro. Those tamales are huge, huge. They're like, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. It's the way tamales should be. They should be the size of burritos. Huge, yeah. These little tiny ones, like, what are you? Come, what the, bro? What the, who y- the? Fuck? You know, you know who makes dope tamales? Who? H E B. H E B. Yep. They're too expensive. I'm gonna brother like five dollars for a pack of seven or eight or twelve. What are you talking about? That's not. The, they're not like. Five. Hey, wait, no mama's way. You're talking about the fresh hey, ones, eh? Hey, wait, no mama's way. Are you talking about the no, wait, the, the fresh, frozen wait, ones? Not, I'm talking about the frozen ones. Eh? Hey, well, I, I'm hey, trying to. Hey, fríos, bro. I don't, you know, I don't know, man. The thing is, I've never. <laughs> really why, why, why am I talking to you in Spanish? You don't know Spanish. Hey, man, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think I ever tried that. I, my mama would kick my ass, man. <laughs> you, sound like, you sound like fucking Channing Tatum in the in that movie where he was trying to be Mexican. What? Yeah. What movie was he trying to be Mexican? The fucking cop movie with Johnny oh, 21? Hill. Yeah, Trump? that would. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm trying to do my be- my best Cheech <laughs> Marin. That's like your Cheech, yeah. All right. Uh, let's just do one more. Um... Yeah, let's go to the very last claim here. Biden claims that the Republican voters agree with what he's doing and that 50% of Republicans support what he's doing. Liars. All right. Given the approximate split by party line across the population and that Biden has a 54.3 approval rating and a 39.9 disapproval rating, it's difficult to conclude that a majority of Republican voters support Biden. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's move it on to the next one here because um, when we watched mm-hmm. it, we were to understand this was supposed to be a press conference and let leave it to the Democrats to take advantage of a uh, of a crisis here, right? Yeah. I mean, Always. Biden's been inoculated, uh, and I don't know about these journalists in here, but he's far enough away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the journalists are following CDC guidelines by being more than six feet apart from each other. But yet they still wear masks. Uh-huh. You know, playing this, as uh, Rand Paul would say, uh, theater, mask it's, theater. It's theater. It's theater. All right, here we go again with the theater. Is, why you got to do Fauci? What do you got to do? Why you got to do Fauci? Why, hey, why do you hate the masks? Why do you hate the mask? You got to wear three. What's wrong with wearing three? What's wrong with wearing three? Look, if you want to have sex, you go in the bathroom and you stick it in the hole. Okay? That's your Fauci. But yeah. you got to wear three masks. Three masks? How many condoms do I need to wear? You got, I mean, you stick it in the hole. You stick it in the hole. You just stick it in the hole. Or you could use one broken one. You could use one broken. It could be like a mask, but why the fuck am I doing Cuomo now? <laughs> that, yeah, it's your Cuomo. <laughs> All right, uh, Fox, uh, Fox host Chris Wallace, and this comes from Daily Wire again, from uh, Ryan Savera. 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 I don't know who he is. Uh, folks, Fox host Chris Wallace hits Biden over performance. Photo appears to show Biden pre-selected reporters. Mm-hmm. Democrat President Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Your boy, Mantis Joe Biden. Mantis Joe Biden. <laughs> received a lot of criticism following his press conference on Thursday over his use of notes, as well as 
notes. Yeah, as well as over a photo showing that Biden had seemingly pre-selected reporters to call on. Hmm. hmm. Why don't you want to take questions hmm. from reporters? Like they didn't call on the Fox reporter. Nope. No, they did not. D- no, they didn't. It's funny. Could you imagine? Don't if, want to could you imagine about- if? Could you imagine if Trump had any form of notes on him? Well, he, he had some stuff before, but he never. He never like pre-selected Mm-mm. anybody. You uh, never went well, from a right? teleprompter. He didn't do it the whole time. He 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 constantly didn't read the teleprompter. I think this is why people don't like him. And I think a lot of Republicans are turned off by him too. Mm-hmm. And I get it. You know, nobody likes when he starts going off and spouting and saying, you know, I'm the best and uh, we're the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the we're the best stuff, but I don't like the, uh, I'm, the I'm the best stuff. It's like yeah, you're telling yourself. We had the best administration, uh-huh. and the dirty Democrats. The dirty damn Democrats. You know, uh, he gets a little divisive. The damn I'm dirty not a apes. Big fan of that, uh, but his policy for the most part was right on, mm-hmm. right on. So, uh, but you'll never see Trump pre-selecting, and definitely he he called on Jim Acosta plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. But he also kicked Jim Acosta out of the oh press, yeah, uh, but White House know. press and. Uh, Everybody was like, yeah, this is unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a little dickish. Yeah. But uh, Obama did that kind of shit, too. Yep. I mean, Obama did it. Who built the Obama? Who Joe built Biden? the cages, Obama? Who built the journalist, Obama? Who built the journalist? It was you and fucking Hillary. We know. All right. Fox News host Christopher Wallace. Is a pedophile. As uh, Joe would call him, Chuck. 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 Hey, what's up, Chuck? Hey, Chuck Wallace. Hey, Chuck. Oh, no, no. I was on, uh, yeah, man, yeah, I was on Chuck's earlier. I was on a, you know, you know the thing. Got a big erection. I was on a, you know, the thing, the, the Chuck thing. Okay, so Chris Wallace. I was on Chuck's erection. Uh, and Chris Wallace, and they, because this is conservative, have to mention mm. a registered Democrat mm-hmm. said that there was, quote, struck, he, that he was, quote, struck by the fact that it seemed on every f- foreign, uh, foreign policy question, not the others, mm-hmm. but on foreign policy, he went to his briefing book like Jen Psaki does yep. sometimes in the briefings and was reading, obviously, White House guidance, the White House talking points, mm-hmm. end quote. Quote again, covering Ronald Reagan for six years, I never saw that, Wallace continued. Watching a lot of news coverage over the years, I've never seen that. A president in a news conference reading talking points. He did that on, it seemed, every foreign policy question. Yep. And that's the video of it down there, which we don't have to watch. Um, But go to this next tweet down here and you'll see a picture because do people do we do 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 these people not know that high quality, high definition pictures exist? Yep. And as you can see, he's called. He's numbered the reporters. He's numbered the reporters. Three. Um, I don't I can't really read it very well. Did he give Um, someone an F? An F. He gave someone an F. F. An F. <laughs> uh, I don't like his. Uh, it's, it probably means uh, a Frank. Probably means fag. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's the gay one. Obviously, the, he's the gay to. one. The fag has to be the first one. See, now, gay one. No, I don't know how press conferences go. And you know, for as for press conferences, this one was like an hour and maybe twenty minutes long. Yeah, um, pretty short. Very short, and that's fine. But he let the reporters keep asking follow up questions because he kept getting sidetracked. Mm-hmm. Now. He was probably prepped for a lot of these questions and a lot of stuff he did go off the cuff, I think. Yeah. And you can tell because he said he, uh, for about the filibuster, that he wants to go back to where it was uh, when he first got in the Senate 120 years ago. 120 years ago. Years ago. So uh, he obviously wasn't prepped enough for that. And Or so he's a lot older than we think he is. Ah, and true. that, what if he's telling the truth and we think he's lying? So Biden called on the following reporters here, okay? Um, Zeke Miller from the Associated Press, uh, somebody's name, far left reporter, PBS, another name, and all these other names, uh, none of them being any sort of right leaning publication whatsoever. PBS, Washington Post, ABC, mm. Wall Street Journal, NBC, CBS, Clown News Network, Clown News and Network, Bloomberg News, and of course, Janet Rodriguez. Our favorite. From yeah. Univision. Uni- Univision. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Numerous pundits and political strategists have alleged online that Biden appeared to have received the questions in advance. Bro, real The quick. allegations have not been proven. Reports and uh, our experts say, but our experts say that this happened, you know? 
Or ex- uh, I don't know. I'm just saying. That's just how they say experts, okay? The uh, allegations haven't been proven. Reports have already uh, already surfaced from the first days of Biden administration that said that Biden administration asked for reporters questions in advance of the daily press wow. briefings, which I don't think is a huge deal. Um, but it also prevents him from calling people, I'm sure, in the future. All no, right. But at the same time, again, they. I'm sure if, if Trump had asked for that, it would have been like headlines for weeks. Well, now why don't you want to? Why don't you want to have them uh, tell you on. on the spot? I know, I know, it sounds weird, and I've probably said, "Well, if this happened to Trump, like, what if the ra- races were reversed?" Mm-hmm. I say all that stuff all the time. What if the races were? But this is sort of, you know, well, if this was black people, if black people were, uh, if black people were uh, uh, invading the Capitol, it would be, it would be a lot down. Right? No, not at all. Because they're the same. It's they're both older white men. Everybody's attacking those kind of people. But it. But the only thing that's different between those two guys is one has an R and the other one has a D next to his name. Uh, let's watch this video here from uh, N- MSNBC's uh, Supercut from Asian uh, Lord and Joe. This is the next link uh, coming from our folks, our friends at Huffington Post, Uh-oh. baby. That's right. You know. We like to look at publications from all different yep. spectrums, baby, and we're gonna. We go don't to discriminate. The f- we're gonna go to the furthest left that we can find right now. I think they rate uh, very biased on the left. Um, Do they really? Some would say they're far left, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, go down, and it's in like the middle of the. There she is. Oh boy. Oh no. Beautiful, brave. Beautiful and brave, dude. Look at those uh, eyebrows. Click on the actual uh, numbers up there on the top left. The fact that she, yeah. the fact that she chose not to wear makeup, it's acting weird or some shit. Oh shit, is she wearing makeup? I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. I'm so gonna assume she's not. What, I can uh, say to the American people. Pause it real quick. What, what has happened here is uh, Morning Joe's MSNBC's Morning Joe. They aired a montage showing the contrast between. Uh, Joe Biden Mantis. Joe Biden. And uh, Donald Trump's first press conference. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they are different. Because one's way funnier, one's way kookier, one's got more personality than this uh, sock filled with fucking mud that we see right up here. Hey, 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 hey guys. This sock filled with uh, fucking jello. Uh, this sock filled with Indian food. Let's just press play. <laughs> Help is here. Help's on the way. Help is on the way. I just want to let you know, I inherited a mess. I can't guarantee we're going to solve everything, but I can guarantee we can make everything better. There has never been a presidency that's done so much in such a short period of time. We have to come together. Mm. Right now. I certainly didn't win by people listening to you people. That's the the other thing we're doing, I might add. Am I giving you too long an answer? Because if you don't want that's the when detail, he forgot what he Russia was saying. Russia is fake news. Russia, this is fake news put out by the media. I'm also yeah. prepared. All right, you can pause uh, it. You can done there. Um, uh, he come on flat top. He wait, come. Why, why was why is this black lady in the front and cover though? Uh, well, I think if you like, cause it's six minutes long. I don't think they keep going. I think they actually sit there and they talk and they go, oh, "What a f- what a breath of fresh air it is to have Biden, isn't Let it? Let me suck that old dick for a couple minutes. Let me just go ahead. I Let mean, me isn't just, it just... I, 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 Joe, can you take this Viagra real quick? Is this great? I, I mean, it's a little noodle now. Uh, Joe, can you get, get it back in? Joe, just can, put your balls in my <laughs> mouth, Joe. Put those raisins in there, there Joe. Go. There you go. It's great. I love <laughs> Joe Biden. I love Joe Biden. All right, so because he loves he loves black people, I wanted to show a little bit of that because I don't think they even showed in that whole video, and I didn't even bother watching it. So, yeah. uh, you know, whatever. But I'm certain, almost, I'm like hundred, I'm like ninety nine percent certain they wouldn't show something unflattering towards Biden on that. Of show. course not. So, um, MSNBC, hell we're no. going to MRC TV. MRC TV. Mer- These are the media research center. And let's watch Joe Scarborough and his wife, Minka, I think is her name. I don't know what her name. I don't give a fuck who these fuckers are. Mm-hmm. Let's just go ahead and play this video. Wait, they're married? I think they're married. Mm. Yeah, this guy used to be a Republican, this uh, Joe yeah, Scarborough, know, right? Yeah, I've, I've heard of Joe Scarborough. Fucking cuck. <laughs> Yesterday, even if you didn't agree with Joe Biden ideologically on every point, even if... <laughs> Uh, you 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 were concerned about maybe his position on, on some issues. Uh, chances are good if you're an American and you were Shoving watching it that. Mouth. You noticed a change of tone. You actually Towed. heard the wrong somebody tone. that was trying to bring Americans together. Somebody who said 
I've been elected to be a problem solver, uh, to Kiss bring ass, this Garbo. country together, uh, as opposed to, again, Donald Trump being extraordinarily combative. Well, a couple weeks in, talking about no president's ever done as much as I, it's just, again, it was just, it was all about him. It was all a bunch of lies. There has never been a presidency that's done so much in such a short period of time. We Today, I'm setting a second goal, <clears throat> and that is we will, by my 100th day in office, have administered 200 million shots in people's arms. Wasn't that Trump's idea? That's right, 200 million shots in wow. 100 days. It would have happened to any I know, I know it's ambitious, twice our original goal. But believe but no me. No other country in the world has even come close, not even close. Believe me. What we were doing. We're terrific. Well, so we're, we're going to give 200 million people Thank a vaccine you, that does nothing. Well, a vaccine easy. that will not, it doesn't stop you from wearing a mask. It doesn't stop you from not having a distance. You still got to, you still got to fucking take another vaccine. You, nothing changes if you take the vaccine. Yeah. Give me, give me one positive thing about taking the vaccine. One positive, one thing that doesn't change now, or one okay. thing that changes. Let's check this uh, fact check before we move on to local news. Um, I I was just feeling f- I th- I thought I was just being funny, right? I, I uh-huh. literally just wanted to see if there was an actual fact check for this statement. Mm. I went, did Biden actually say that he was in the Senate tw- 120 years ago? And there was. And lo and behold, Snopes had to fucking pull that up because who in the hell needed a fucking fact check for this? Who went, oh, Biden's over 120 years old, which would make it what he joined. He's probably the youngest in the Senate. So maybe he's probably 140 years old yeah. right now. I mean, no wonder he fell down those stairs. You know, he fe- <laughs> it's like, what the <laughs> fuck? So here's the claim. All right. Uh, it goes. Joe Biden said, with regard to filibuster. I believe we should go back to the position of the filibuster that existed just when I came up to the United States Senate 120 years ago. And lo and behold, Snopes had to say true because this is like the one fucking fact check that they're going to go, not mixture. Like, this is the one thing that they fact check, dude. This is so freaking hilarious. And it's a joke that anyone would have to even like click on this to find out what the truth was. And now what they'll say is, you know how normally it will, if you listen, if you read this from any other publication, maybe even earlier from Snopes or even USA Today or uh, the the PolitiFact, they'll say, well, this is uh, half true. This is partly false because, yes, he did say that, but he didn't mean that, right? Obviously, the guy didn't mean he was there for 120 years. It's too funny. It is too funny. It's true that he said these words. However, it's unclear if he misspoke or was simply making a joke. You're not a comedian. You don't make jokes, okay? We don't go pee-pee in your cokes. You yes. just misspoke. Yes. Oh, oh. God damn, damn you still got a little of that racism in your throat. You got some of that racism in your throat. Right. Take some NyQuil, or that'll take care of that in the morning. Listen, this is a distraction. This is exactly a distraction. You know how they go, oh, well, no, that's a distraction. 100, by 100, la- 100 la- laptop, 100's laptop. Distraction, distraction, Russian disintegration. Oh, did you hear a fucking about Hunter Biden, bro, that they fucking found a gun that, that he threw, that his, uh, his, the girl that he's married to? Yeah, we're not on it. We're not on it right now. So, it, it, it's it's not cool to make fun of old people, you mm. know. It's not cool to make fun of old people. Kind of. Sometimes it is. Sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, what's worse is, is making fun of an old person who is just doesn't have all his cognitive functions anymore. This is not the Joe Biden toboggan mantis nope. that we know from four years ago. All of a sudden, four years changed. He said he's also planning on running, running again. again. So we'll yeah, see no. if that happens, you know. Damn lying. Um, but... This is all a distraction. I mean, who literally do you think that fucking 120 years is for? It's for all the right-wing pundits, uh, shows like ours, to put it on and go, this is what's out there, a fact check of a statement that's obviously a misspeak. Yeah, he misspoke. He misspoke. The fact, the fact that they think he was making a joke shows their idiocracy. Shows their bias. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, he was making a joke. He wants to go to a filibuster, a serious conversation, and makes a joke. Um, yeah, he came to the United States Senate 120 years ago. Like, come on, that's not even possible. The oldest people in the world are not. I don't even have to explain to you how old the oldest person in the world, and it's not Joe fucking Biden, mm-hmm. okay? Um, or is he Dracula? Yeah, we're going to finish that up for now. Okay, let's get into the last story here, and it's going to be 
Local news and politics, okay? We're going to get into this real fast. We've only got like four minutes left, and we're going to talk about this from Texas Monthly, okay? They just moved into an Austin neighborhood now. They want to end one of its traditions Uh-oh. here. Car clubs have gathered for decades at Chicano Park in the East Cesar Chavez neighborhood. Wow. But residents of a new luxury apartment building have started calling the police to stop them. Wow. This is like when uh, the condos were put up and like like near Rainy Street or whatnot, and they complained about the noise at Rainy Street. Gentrification. These are the again. people that are moving into your town, voting Democrat, and yep. raising your taxes, yep. raising your property taxes. Yep. These are the people you're letting into your... I mean, it's fine to let them in, but realize... Don't let them vote. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking... Estos pinche gringos, way. I'm not for some voter suppression. Sometimes I am. This is one hey, of them. Hey, bro, right? they got some swangers on that, just, bro. Look I'm at that, bro. Kidding. I bet you that fucking fifth wheel reclining. Cállate, puto. The fleet of several dozen cars pulled into East Austin's Fiesta Gardens, or Chicano Park, as, it, uh, as locals call it, on a recent weekend with the booming of powerful stereo systems and now announcing their arrival. Yeah, you also hear, like, rattling, too, because... Obviously, the if you're not Loctiting every fucking uh, yeah. every bolt, it's gonna it's gonna yeah. roll itself out. It's gonna vibrate out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's not, that's, that's not that's not what they play. In, in the, it's only it's only it's only bass, bro. It's only bass. Anyways, like my, yeah, bro. That, those car clubs, bro. That's my homies right there, bro. Uh, yeah, I, uh, this is fucking too long. Didn't read article right here. Most of them about 100 feet away, a 20 something member of a car club in shorts and a T-shirt who said he goes by the nickname Kilo. Kilo. Because <laughs> he sells them kilos, definitely, bro. Definitely, de- definitely uh, Wait, not a they, drug hey, dealer. Why they call you Kilo, eh? He calmly Because I watched, sell them <laughs> kilos, eh? He uh, calmly watched the bizarre scene unfold. Born and raised in Austin, he said he'd been coming to the park to check out custom cars and connect with old friends since he was a kid. He wondered why, instead of calling police and creating unnecessary tension, the blonde woman and the other angry uh, residents haven't walked across the street and introduced themselves first. Oh. Opening dialogue, quote, If you come with good energy, you'll find out that we're just here to chill and enjoy the cars and the scenery, he said. Uh. Don't be scared. Don't and be put, scared. And that's the end of that uh, article there. But this, who does Essentially, age? you guys get it. New people moved in. They're fucking Karens. I wonder what color they're they are. They're Shaniquas. They're Bobbies. They're Kyles. And they're fucking lame asses. And they come to your town. Raise your taxes. Raise your taxes. Complain about your culture. And they're on your side. Now, I don't know whose side that you're on out there. I assume you guys are at a libertarian standpoint. And... You guys are and I bet you I, and I bet you it's all these you know you're welcome. They're all these black, white, Asian, Mexican people who think they're fucking better than everybody else. Fucking think they're all like oh, hot shit and they're complaining, bro. It's like, dude, let the fucking car club do the fucking car club. With you, man, go kick it with them. Barbecue. You know, I get it. Embrace though. the culture. They're, man. they're bothering the the white folks. You know that. Uh, it, it, I just wonder who these white folks are. That are able to afford these expensive buildings, uh, these expensive rooms and apartments near the Chicano area, Chicano Park, which is actually not that. It's like that's near the hospital, right? I would guess, right there. See, and they're the same ones waving the black fl- Black Lives Matter. Oh, they're flag. fucking. They're the ones that are. They're the. They're the ball lickers. Yep, they are. They're yep. Yeah, they. We're the ones. We took we took gender and race training. Anyways, we got to so go. We know we're gonna continue we on. Know. We've got lots of more. We got lots lots of news to keep yes, going on. Yes. So if you guys keep our content going, we'll be on Facebook and YouTube. Check us out. Everywhere. In the meantime, for Brandon the Hard at Mitchell, for David Aguilar, I'm Los saying that's right, and I forget we're not going by that clock. This is actually three <laughs> seconds still. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys keep watching here on Facebook and YouTube. All right. Oh, there you go. Thank you, guys. Uh, we are continuing. This is After Hours. Rick said it was Elian Gonzalez. Elian. E- Elian. Elian. Yeah, Elian yeah, that Gonzalez. sounds right. See, I was closer with Elliot than you were yeah, with you Julian were. or well, whatever you said. Yeah. Um, I know there was an Ian at the end. All right. After Hours, this is uh, Emergency Exit more, like, you know, Good Mythical more. That's right. After Dark. After Dark. And it's already dark when we start, so it's even darker. You know mm. what I mean? This is straight like Wesley, fucking Wesley it, Snipes. It, 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 went, it went from Sam, Samuel Jackson to Wesley Snipes. All right, so let's get into some important uh, uh, news here. Uh, this is nation uh, nationwide news here. Uh, nationwide news. 
we've got mass shooters on the rise. Oh, wow. On the rise, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so crazy. Matter of fact, I think there were seven ones ju- ar- already this year. And can you can you pull up, Brandon, uh, something on the side real quick? Um, mass shooters 2021. And uh, I think there is a um, there's an article that says mass shootings that you didn't hear about because we've only heard about a few of them. Um, no, nope, it's not going to be that. Uh, not not that one either. Uh, it's like you didn't hear about it or something. Um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going down. Most of the they wrestle. Yeah, he'll look for it while we talk, but I wanted to go into talking about these mass shooters in general because um, there's a lot of uh, assumptions being thrown around, and you know what happens when we assume, okay? It only makes an ass out of you. Yes. Not me. Um, so I guess you can just go ahead and look up Mass Murders 2021. I think that'll be just fine because the, all we need are the names of the people uh, to prove my point. So... Media. This uh, the first article I've got in the in the doc here is media is from Daily Wire once again. God, I don't know why I have so many Daily Wire ones because I got us because you suck the pee pee. Suck at the pee pee of the Ben it, Shapiro. You suck the Shapiro pee pee. You know they got a new. They've got a new. Um, they've got a new show on Daily Wire called uh, Candace Candace Owens. Yeah, bro. What's up with that, man? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, man, they, they need the to get name? a Mexican on there like me. Um. A Mexican? A Mexican, bro. They got to get, get, get Chicano, bro. Anyways. From Chicano Park. 103 mass shootings uh, in the U.S. so far. <laughs> now, see, here's the thing that's weird about mass shootings. There are a couple different definitions of a mass mm. shooting. Um, like if you shoot in a mass? N- uh, yeah, there's a mass. There's literally a, <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a mass shooting, and then there's mass shooters. A uh, mass shooting. Uh, we got their names here. No. Nope. They, maybe they don't uh, name them, but I w- you would assume they would n- have their names Whoa, somewhere. Whoa, that's a lot. Dude, they're all in March. What? Well, I think maybe that their definition of mass shooting. Can you go up to the top of uh, this one and see what the definition of mass shooting is to them? Um, Incidents? Oh. Yeah, four or more victims, firearm-related violence. Wow. That's all you need is four for a mass four. shooting? I would think just more than two is a mass shooting, you know? Huh. Like, at least three, yeah, right? Yes, right? Two or more? Even, yeah, I'd say even two or more. Like, yeah, more than one is a mass shooting, right? I don't know. I would, I would classify it not so much on the, the number, but the intent. If you go out with the intent to just kill people mm-hmm. randomly... Mm-hmm. That's a mass. Yeah, but I was just having a, a mass. Shooting. Some people are just having mm-hmm. bad days, and so. yeah, and then you only end up. Let's say you only end up getting one or two. Like yeah. it may not necessarily count, but if <laughs> you that only was, got one or two, I, I mean, should. as bad as that sounds, but your intent <laughs> Wait, so, obviously so, was to get more. So on, if you were that person, would that be a bad day for you? If you went out to get two or well, more, and you only got like one or two, are you like, ah, oh, shit? Well, you know, it just depends on how I how Cause, cause how I slept. And, well, because then know, you the think to yourself, before. like, motherfucker, I came out to be a mass shooting. Like, you know, I'm trying to go down as the greatest mass shooter of all <laughs> time. And then they're like, I only fucking killed two, and I got my ass arrested. I'm just <laughs> saying, look, I'm not supporting mass shootings. I'm just saying, how do you how do you how do you grade a successful mass? You know what? This is a bad conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know the left will probably take this out of context and say, oh, well, look. All right. So I'm going to get back into the what I was talking about here, and I got to pull up I'm this. trying to be smarter about what I talk about, bro. I'm trying not to get myself in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because well, they're trying to fucking cancel everybody. You know what I mean? I'm trying, to have a, I'm trying to have a cooking show on the Food Channel at least by 2027. You well, know you what I mean? At least get a... Uh, 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 you can get a food cooking show on our show, man. Oh, you can, bro, why, I can not, fucking why not do that? You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, from the Daily Wire, and I'll just read uh, this real quick here. Media activists assumed Colorado shooter was white. Yep. And they deleted posts and pivot when his identity is revealed. Ooh. Um, I wonder what happened there. Oh, I guess you can't read it because you're not a member. Damn. Okay, sorry. Oh, wouldn't it? Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I gave you the password, didn't I? Oh. Login? Ah, dang it. I've, yeah, I've had that. Whatever. 
Whatever. But they assumed his gender, or I mean his race. What was his race? Uh, well, of course, it was white here, so it doesn't matter anyways. But, uh, but was he white? Uh, no, he wasn't white. He wasn't white. And actually, I think, let's see, if you go to this Daily Wire one. Yeah, this is good. This is one that you can look at here. Okay, so we'll start with this one here. Kamala Harris's niece tweets about Shooter being a white man. He deletes, uh, she deletes it and says, I made an assumption, okay? Um, and following a tragic shooting grocery store in Boulder, Colorado, Ooh. Mina Harris, author and niece of President, Vice President, I see I'm doing the same thing that he does there, President Harris rushed to a post rushed to post a tweet decrying the shooter being a violent white man, even though the sus- suspected shooter turned out to be an, uh, of a, uh, a Arabic. A Arabic. Arabic. A Arabic. Arabic. A Arabic. Uh, I'm hunting a Arabic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically Muslim. Okay, Syrian. Matter of fact, Syrian. And um, you know, it was, uh, what, what you had, who said that? Was it you, Brandon, that sent that meme? Yeah. With Krasinski saying it was like that uh, that uh, that meme where it's him at a whiteboard, and it said to the something about can you find that and read that? And in the meantime, I'll read this. It says uh, less than a month ago the U.S. bombed Syria. Now a Syrian immigrant shoots up a grocery store, but nobody is having that. No conversation. one's having that nobody's, conversation. Nobody's talking about that. Yeah, we're talking about it here, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that was pretty interesting to think about. Yeah, I mean a Syrian Sy- and. We're, we don't get to, we don't know very much about mm. his affiliation with Muslims, but he is he definitely like left a lot of Islam uh, proverbs or whatever and, mm-hmm. and and verses and shit on his Facebook and whatnot. Quote: The Atlanta shooting was not even a week ago. Violent ro- white men are the greatest terrorist threat to our country. And whoa, quote. Harris wrote in a now deleted post. You deleted your post. Oh my goodness, why are you so? The post was captured by oh reporter goodness, Caleb Hole. Uh, I can't believe it. Um, apparently, growing irritated with the pushback over her false tweet, Harris complained to Twitter on Monday. Insecure men getting defensive about this. My God, y'all are so fucking fragile. Why is she blue check marked? Because she's. Literally, that's because she's just, related to Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean that's well, all it, it takes. It said she's also an author too. So Kiss she's my ass. Probably she, got a how old is you know, this bitch? Following. How old is this bitch? Well, she's kind of cute. I don't care if I she's know. cute. Look at her face. She looks like Speedy Gonzalez. She, she, I don't care if she's cute. No, how, she looks like Bugs Bunny or bro, some shit. This she looks like an idiot. Okay, take it easy. She looks like a stupid female. That's why she got oh to be in the God. kitchen. No, they got to no, get this no, woman no. in the kitchen and treat her some right manners, bro. All they right. got to put stop, this lady stop. right here in the kitchen. I'm going to say it. Get that woman in the kitchen so she learns her place, how to cook for the man, bro. I'm going to say that right now. All right. It's not even funny. Stop it. Let's do this. It's not even funny. I don't care if she gets mad. Let her get mad. Uh, the, the opinions expressed by David Aguilar... Don't necessarily <laughs> express those opinions here on, uh, uh, or don't reflect emergency exits opinions. You know you want to say it. No, it's not true. Whatever you said about fucking women cooking, men are obviously better cooks. Bro, what the fuck, sti- why would you want her to cook? Bro, statistically, women women have been less happy. Name three fucking name three famous. Brandon, look up the statistics of women being less happy since they've gotten in the workplace. Women have been no, more happy uh, when they okay, stayed look, in the home. We don't need to. We don't need to look at it. I'm just stuff. I'm just saying that she needs. You know, there's a reason she doesn't know what she's talking about. You're gonna be a better cook than her. Oh, I already am a better bro. Do you have you fucking seen my Instagram videos of the shit I cook up yeah, for breakfast? I bro, I make the best hash browns. All right. I make the All best right. cheesecake. Let's, I want to get out of here eventually, so let's talk about this uh, this stuff. And what he's saying about women is not True. my opinion. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So Harris eventually deleted the viral post and offered a snarky post in response to her mistake. Harris said that she thought the shooter was white because he was taken into custody alive. She also claimed that the majority of mass shootings in the U.S. are carried out by white men. And this is what her post says. I deleted a previous tweet about the suspect in the Boulder shooting. I made an assumption based on his being taken into custody alive and the fact that the majority of mass shootings in the U.S. are carried out by white men. (laughs) This is not even true. This is not even true. Now, wait a minute. Come on, man. This is some. This is. If you were to plug this in, can we? Uh, can you look up a uh, fact check? 
The majority of mass shootings in the U.S. are carried out by white men. Is this true or false? I want to see if PolitiFact, um, USA Today, fucking Snopes, I want to see what they say. Because this better, you, this statement itself, by their own standards, should be a half truth. It should be. I just think that it's funny that this man was Muslim or Syrian, and so was Obama, and how Muslims have grown since Obama has come into office. Uh, did you get yeah get that f- uh, get a fact check going here? Actually, uh, see, maybe I can do it here. The fact that the majority of mass shootings in the U.S. are carried out by white men. Oh, I t- it oh, took me out of here. You took you to the Twitter. Well, um, we're gonna go into this. We'll go into these stats here in a second here, um, because I've because that stuff's gonna definitely make it make it way easier. Uh, while a superficial comparison of the statistics seems to suggest that African-American shooters are overrepresented and Latino shooters are underrepresented, the fact that the shooter's race is unclear in around 5% of cases, along with the different time frames over which these statistics are calculated, means no such conclusions could be drawn. Um, between eight, 1982 and March 2021, 66 out of the 121 mass shootings in the United States were carried out by white shooters. So that's half. Now, that's about half, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And uh, they are carried out by white shooters. This is this is correct, right? The majority of mass shootings in the U.S. are carried This is technically what she said is true, right? Just like we, we had fact checks. What was the fact check last week where it was uh, – uh, d- uh, well, Ted Cruz says illegal immigrants were getting the fourteen hundred dollar stimulus check, mm-hmm. and they said this was partly false. Mm. Um, so by comparison, the perpetrator was African American in I can't see how many mass shootings twenty one twenty one mass shootings and Latino in ten. Mm-hmm. When calculated, so Mexicans don't shoot up as many things. Bro. So when calculated in percentages, this amounts to fifty four percent whites, seventeen percent. And 8% respectively. So 17% African Americans Mm -hmm. and 8% Latinos. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the next link that I have, and keep that one up there, bud, um, because the next link I have are races in America. Mm. Because I want to know what the proportional Mm -hmm. rate is, right? So how many whites, how how many percentages of whites do we have? How How many many percentages of of blacks? And Mm -hmm. I want to see, because any sort of... Uh, disproportionate anything uh, when it comes to race is racist. Yeah. So if we can go down and see, uh, yeah, we can go, we can scroll through here. I thought this was a different type of thing here. And, and, and just while we're looking for it, I just want to explain what you're trying to say is like, let's say we have 10 people in a room and five of those people were white. Three of those people were black, and two of those people were Mexican. Yeah, there it is right here. So we'll hold a second here before you get into that. Mm-hmm. White alone, percent, 76%. Uh, let's go back real quick to the mass shootings there. And what was the what was the percent? 54%. Okay, so it's 25% less. Okay, so we'll go to the uh, that back. Let's go with black. They're 13% of the population, but they've committed 17% mass murders. That's disproportionately more. Mm-hmm. But whites commit more. So this is the here's the argument that I have here for you. Mm-hmm. And this is where I want to try to put this in perspective for everybody. If you're not catching, if you're not with me right now. Yeah. Remember that we have the Black Lives Matter movement. And yeah. what are they talking about? That there are black people are unfairly targeted by the police. Yes. And when we look at the statistics, how many black people are killed by cops? Uh, a year or whatever by mm-hmm. the cops, and it's a lot, right? It's disproportionate to their community. It means there's more than 13% of the people that were killed by cops w- that were black. It's disproportional. Yeah. But if you look at the numbers, more white people actually died from cops, but it wasn't, it was proportional to their, mm-hmm. to their, uh, to their race. Okay. At some point, we need to come up with a regulation or mm-hmm. some. St- now, I'm not for regulations, but I need to have some. We need some rules here. If you're going to say that most white people or most mass shooters were white, technically you're you're right, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're also wrong mm-hmm. because if we're using the standards you guys use in BLM, which is clearly 
apples to apples in this situation because we're talking about literally the same types of proportional rates here. Whites are only 76% of the, of, uh, of the population, mm -hmm. and they commit 54%. Mm -hmm. Okay? Blacks are only 13%. 13 and a half. We'll give them 14, okay? They have committed 17%. Mm -hmm. Okay? What about the, let's go to uh, Hispanic, 18.5. And but they do, they actually do less. Mm. They actually do less. You damn right we do, because we fucking work too damn hard to kill anybody, bro. Here's the thing, okay? We're all right. Everybody's right in this, but we're all too busy fighting the George, uh, the the not the George Floyd, then the the BLM thing, man. The people on the right are right that white people are getting killed more than uh, black people. The other side's also right that it's disproportionate, but doesn't mean because there's that. Inequality, you, there's uh, just because you see that doesn't mean there's inequality of the races. Okay, it's something going on. The culture, it's uh, it's the way children were brought up without fathers in the in in the hood. <laughs> yeah, in the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's lots of factors that go on. And school to prison pipeline. I don't even think that's an actual thing, man. It's just when you're surrounded and you're poor and you uh, hang out with the wrong people. Even if you're poor. You should, your parents should be there to know what you do yeah. and keep you away from the, the bad people. Well, see, then, then what happens there is Reaganomics, right? W you know, what happened was we went to war. There were single mothers. Fathers were fighting in war. Or there was a crack epidemic. Fathers got addicted to drugs. Yeah. Single mothers in the home. And, and that's the thing, man. So many times when, when you look at this historically, you see that the government has targeted through drugs and many other means, the lower income colored communities. That's why I don't take the government serious when it comes to the fucking COVID vaccine. You've never been kind to our people. You, the government has never been kind to the black and brown community. You want me to believe you that you're fucking doing something right with this vaccine for us? Kiss my ass. Well, they're also committing racism in order to uh, yeah. to sort of erase the racism that they had originally, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And not to say that, I mean, the only real people that are around uh, in those times where there were lots more racism are still in office today, mm -hmm. and they're on the Democrat and the Republican side. And two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. No, absolutely not. Um, and so... What they're doing is they, they have these things called like affirmative action. Mm -hmm. They've got now this. Now, if we can go to this next uh, link right here, buddy. Um, this is also crazy here. This is the Daily Wire show, I guess, today. Democrat Senator Tammy Duckworth says he'll own, that she'll only vote for Biden nominees who are racial minorities or LGBT. Okay, Hell yeah. That's all I really need to say because she said this. I am a no vote on the floor on all non-diversity nominees, Duckworth said. You know, I will vote for racial minorities. I will vote for LGBTQ, but uh, but nobody else I'm, vote, I'm not voting for. But anybody else I'm not voting for. Okay, I just want to talk about why this isn't uh, something that she gets fired for. First wow. of all, yeah, she should be uh, she should be taken off of her her senate or her her yeah her seat her senate. She's a senator. This is somebody that's a senator. So you're One you, you don't people. you're not even looking at qualifications. Yeah, you're looking only at color and gender. Well, first of all, no, she is looking at qualifications. But first, you have to pass the LGBTQ or be non-white. It's another one of those uh, words that the left has conveniently changed to something that it doesn't mean anymore. So diversity used to mean like everybody. So this everything. is thing. It, now, diversity does not mean that anymore. Mm -mm. Diversity means no whites. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, how it used to be like no blacks, yeah. colored only, you know, yep. colored only is over that way. Like they're doing the same thing now you know what with they, whites. You know, you know what? The gay and trans conservatives and and gay and trans fucking racial minorities who are conservative go 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 fucking prove this bitch wrong yeah well i mean here's the thing diversity means everybody but when anybody you hear this you hear anybody say this we hire for diversity that basically means we don't hire white males mm -hmm. okay okay need not apply we hire for diversity here. Hey, you think you get my job back? At a <laughs> well, you can definitely get your job back just based off, based off of your skin color. That's true. I'm just kidding. I'm not sure if that's true. But when you vote for somebody based on their racial mm -hmm. 
their race, their skin color, mm-hmm. or their sexual orientation. That's sort of it's a no no. It's sexist. It's sexist, and it's also racist mm-hmm. at the same time. And it makes me think: uh, How is this not considered systemic racism? Mm-hmm. And I actually had to pull up. I had to go on the Wikipedia and find oh, the out because you know words keep changing. So I wanted to keep reading on what I wanted to get reminded here. Institutional racism, also known as systemic racism, is a form of racism uh, that is embedded as normal practice within society or an organization. It's embedded as normal practice, which means, yes, I'm not going to vote for anyone that is white. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, Just imagine if the races were reversed on this one. Well, and and, and I just want to say that's that's the thing that that the left is doing right now. It's normalizing things that are not normal, right? Like homosexuality, transgender, those aren't normal. You know what I mean? It's it's not your normal population, but they're trying to norm, uh, normalize unnormal things. You know what I mean? And it's weird because it's like, no, we don't we don't need that. We don't need to normalize these things. You know, and even Ben Shapiro talks about it when he talks about his uncle who was like talking. Schizophrenic. To, yeah, schizophrenic. It's like, treat them the way they're supposed to be treated. Like, that's the way you do. Same thing with homelessness and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Stop trying to put a Band-Aid over it because of color or gender. Yeah. And uh, so back to systemic racism here. You can't fight racism with more racism. Mm-mm. You just need to stop with race completely. Nobody's special because of their race. Matter of fact, they introduced two new Muppets. I heard about this today. They introduced new two new Muppets on Sesame Street, and they're black, right? No. They're they're brown. They're brown characters. And can you bring them out? Can I see a picture of them? Maybe pull up a video oh because there's gosh. like a there's a little clip of them saying. Oh, you know, it's your it's your your hair and your nose and your skin that makes you, you know, basically saying it's what's on the outside that makes you. The, it, it's far from what? yeah. Here you go. Yeah, listen. Look, look at this thing here. Sesame Street's introduced two new black Muppets to teach about race. Like we don't need so to be now, teaching our kids so about race. So now your skin color. Our mouths and eyes make us who we are. Many people call this race. Go back, go back. Even what did he? What did he just make say? Make us who we are. <laughs> skin color. My skin things color. Things on the outside, like our skin color, our hair texture, uh-huh. our noses, <laughs> <laughs> our mouths and eyes make us who we are. Many okay, people stop. call this make race. Make us who we are. But your you, hair, your skin color makes you who you are. Martin Luther King would roll over in his grave yeah. if he it's like I if don't he want them to be judged he... on the color of their skin but the contents of their character. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's yeah. right here. I don't care what color this is. I care what's in here. Yep. What's in there? That is if Martin Luther King what they're teaching kids, If man. Martin Luther King heard another black person say that, he would be rolling over in his grave because he's that that's what I'm trying to unteach you people. Is stop fucking looking at the color of your skin and the nose and the lips and the hair because that's not what defines you. Again, systemic racism is a form of racism that is embedded as normal practice within society or an organization. It's embedded, which Mm. means it's injected. It's placed in. It's an ideology. As normal practice. It's an ideology. And it's so crazy. That we are all trying to fight racism when we can just treat everybody as equal. Yep. Nobody gets any special treatment. Mm-mm. Sorry that the the past was past, but I didn't own slaves, and nobody that I know has either. Nobody that you know, not even your grandparents, nope. were alive. Well, they may have been alive for Jim Crow stuff, but Jim Crow is a whole other fucking ball game. <laughs> and there's Jim Eagle now. Yeah, <laughs> according to Biden, is Jim Eagle it makes Jim Crow it, look it, like Jim Eagle. If if you if you need to show your ID when you vote, that's worse than Jim Crow. You're gonna that's look up worse, Joe Eagle. That's worse than being sprayed down in the streets by a water hose, having to pull out your ID to fucking vote. Yeah, it's, you gotta be kidding me, Joe. Come on, weird. man. All right, so finally, let's get into this final stuff here. Project Veritas. 
We are absolute fans of Project yes. Veritas because they act, they do actual journalism. Can we get James O'Keefe on the show? I'm pretty sure he's been wanting to get on for a while. I love James O'Keefe. Yeah, let's man. get him on, man. I mean, we'll, we'll talk to that guy. I w- I, what I want to do is publish something so that we have to retract it so that he can send us a retracto. Oh, yeah, let's talk shit about him then. Just to get a retracto. We should, we should talk shit about him. Retracto. James O'Keefe is a homosexual. Alpaca. James O'Keefe is gay. No, no, no. And no, no. he Hold voted for Barack Obama. No, because he's gonna send. He's gonna send his lawyer, James O'Keefe. On Wait, your side. is he the one that has the half Asian lawyer? No, that's uh, Chris. Uh, uh, Chris. Crowder. Chris Wallace. It's Chris Crowder. Stephen Crowder. Stephen Crowder. There it's you Chris go. Chris Crowder, y'all. There you go. Project Veritas. This is from the New York Times, and this comes from a couple months ago. Project Veritas video was a qu- quote coordinated disinformation campaign. Researchers said, "What the timing of the deceptive video, which accuses Ilhan Omar of voter fraud, indicates that several conservatives, including Donald Trump Jr., may have may have known about it in advance." Go down, and let's look at the the. Okay, so this is from September 29, thousand twenty. And I say she's a woman of color. Uh, Maggie Astor, that. yes. Maggie Maggie Fatster. All right, a Fatster. Dis- a deceptive video released on Sunday by the conservative activist James O'Keefe. Which claimed throughout, uh, which claimed through unidentified unidentified sources and with no verifiable evidence that Representative Ilhan Omar's campaign had collected ballots illegally was probably part of a coordinated disinformation effort, according to researchers at Stanford University, and blah blah blah. blah. Time out. Look at look at all the look at all the anti right a deceptive video already starting off making you not believe the video. Well, first of all, hold uh, on, hold on. Okay, released by on Sunday by a conservative activist, right? Anybody who reads this is already going to be turned off, which claimed so it's not true through unidentified. So you're you know with no verifiable evidence, right? Everything is already making you disbelieve what 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 James O'Keefe did uh, was prob- was probably part of a coordinated different everything she's saying in the in, this paragraph is made up of lies it's as if she was getting paid by the democrats just to say this kind of stuff yeah. like you you at one point did you ever see anything james o'keefe did yeah like uh, as disinformation effort like he's an actual journalist and he goes I don't have apologize for it. I will dress up like a, a telephone guy. Mm-hmm. I will dress up like a pimp. Mm-hmm. We will go undercover. We will lie to you in order to record our the conversations. Truth. Yes, to get the truth. That's all we do. Yep. That's journalism. Yep. If I came up to you and said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, James O'Keefe. Can we talk to you about this? You can say, no, fuck off. Yep. No, we have to lie to you to get this. And that is legal. Yeah. And I'm sorry that you got busted for saying what was on your mind here. But- the video contains footage of a man identified as uh, Lieben. Yeah, Mohammed showing off ballots. Uh, he says he has mm-hmm. collected for a Minneapolis City Council candidate, something that, depending on when the video was filmed, may not have been illegal because a district court judge in July temporarily suspended Minnesota's ban on third parties collecting and returning a large number of completed ballots. Mr. Mohammed was not working for Mrs. Omar. What a coincidence. The video that, that, that it was that it was temporarily suspended. Right. The video then claims that Democratic operatives connected to Miss Omar's campaign paid voters to hand over blank email uh, uh, mail in ballots, filled them out. This would be illegal, but the allegations come solely from the unnamed people who speak with Project Veritas operatives in the video, and who faces are not shown, and whose faces are not shown. All right. So, go to the next link here because. What I, they said initially and, and throughout here, and uh, what they said are straight up disinformation. Mm-hmm. These folks that say that Project Veritas puts out disinformation, it's coordinated disinformation efforts. There are rulings and there are things. Yeah. This is defamation because Project Veritas has never, ever, ever done that. And this comes from the Federalist. Project Veritas wins early round in defamation lawsuit against New York Times. This comes from... Uh, like I said, Molly. Oh, my girl, Molly Hemingway, March twenty second, twenty twenty one. You know, you know, you've read this girl before, dude. Molly Hemingway is the shit, man. She's great. Uh, she is from the Federalist. Okay, yeah. A New York judge slammed the New York Times. A New York judge, baby, uh, slammed the New York Times for blurring the lines between news and opinion. Wow. 
The paper had attempted to get a defamation lawsuit against it dismissed on the grounds that, among other things, its reporters were just expressing, expressing their personal opinions when they disparaged the investigative journalist at Project Truth. Or Veritas, baby. The judge ruled in the law. The, the judge ruled the lawsuit can go forward, finding that Project Veritas showed significant evidence that the New York Times may have been motivated by actual malice and mm -hmm. acted with reckless disregard when it ran several articles against the investigative journalism outfit. Quote, if a writer interjects an opinion and in, uh, interjects an opinion in a news article and will seek to claim legal protections as opinion, it stands to reason that the writer should have an obligation to alert the reader, including a court that may need to determine whether it is factor opinion. Uh, that is opinion. Whether it is factor opinion. Oh, fact or opinion or that it is opinion. Fact or opinion? I don't know what that means. It must be judge talk, right? Judge Charles Wood of the New York Supreme Court said, all right. The lawsuit stems from the New York Times coverage of an explosive video released in September mm -hmm. purporting to show illegal blah, blah, blah. We read all that stuff. The video was based on a Snapchat videos bragging about ballot harvesting posted by this guy, uh, the brother-in-law of a city council candidate named Jamal Osman. Project Veritas describes the video in its lawsuit. Mr. Muhammad displayed a vast number of ballots littering his car's dashboard while boasting in Somali Numbers don't lie. You can see my car here is full. All these here are absentee ballots. Can't you see? Look at all these. My car is full. And just today, we got 300 ballots for Jamal Osman. In another video, Mr. Muhammad filmed himself exiting an apartment complex with his hands stuffed with voter ballots and boasting, Two in the morning, still hustling! Two in the morning, still hustling. The video also included interviews with name sources as well as multiple confidential sources. Jamal... Uh, Jamal, a community service officer for the Ramsey County Sheriff's Whoa. Office and a political consultant wow. in the M Minneapolis Somali American community, said that there was widespread corruption by Somali American politicians, including cash payments to elderly voters in exchange for their absentee ballots. Kamal has been quoted in on the record 10 New York Times news stories at a knowledgeable, as a knowledgeable source and a political uh, insider. So he's been one of the... Yeah. Uh, sources yeah. and experts that they like to uh, keep the out. Site, yeah. They like to cite and not tell us who they are. Reporters Maggie Fatster, Aster, excuse me, and Tiffany Sue described the video as deceptive, false, and with no verifiable, uh, no verifiable evidence. The first paragraph of Aster's story, which ran in the news section of the newspaper, began, quote, a deceptive video released on Sunday by the conservative activist James O'Keefe, which claimed throughout... Uh, which claimed, though, unidentified sources. I said it wrong the first time. I'm reading it wrong again. Which claimed through unidentified sources, which no verifiable evidence. Oh, so so they're suing that yeah. that writer that we just read. Yes, they're suing oh, that shit. writer nice. and the New York Times as well. Wow. The Times asked a judge to dismiss the defamation case, arguing, among other things, that these statements were, quote, mere opinion incapable of being judged true or false, as Judge Wood put it. Despite the smears appearing in the news section of the newspaper, the Times argued they were subjective assessments from the reporter. They were subjective assessments mm -hmm. from the reporter. <clears throat> they were saying it's opinion. Because mail-in voting and the integrity of 2020 elections has become so politicized, a person watching Project Veritas could find it incredibly deceptive or accurate depending on whether the video aligns with their politi political beliefs, the Times argued. Project nope. Veritas responded, responded by noting that the Times' own policies prohibit interjecting subjective opinions into news story. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Well, not even that. The same thing that they that they said, the whole mail-in voting, deceptive, accurate, depending on whether you align with the views, it, it could be misconstrued. Their opinion column can be misconstrued for that, for, for that also. That's right. The articles that are subject of this action called the video deceptive. But the dictionary definitions of disinformation and deceptive provided by the defendant's counsel certainly apply to Astor's and So's failure to note that they interjected their opinions in news articles, as they now claim, this judge added. Um, actually, this is, uh, I think, Veritas. Veritas said mm -hmm. that. New York Times loss comes the same week a federal judge warned that the country is in danger because, quote, quote, 
We are very close to one-party control, mm. unquote, of the media. Judge Lawrence Sibblerman of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals described the New York Times and other leftist publications as virtually Democratic broadsheets. Oh, wow. my goodness. And they are actively – I mean, look, I mean, I'll read this again. I mean, that was – that's the, the nail in the coffin – the articles that are the subject of this action called the video deceptive, but the dictionary definitions of disinformation and deceptive provided by the defendant's counsel certainly apply to Astor's and So's failure to note that they interjected their opinions as news articles. Like, so they also, in court, they showed like 58 other publications that have said um, Project Veritas is like deceptively editing mm. and they like they they cite all these people mm. and they go yeah they should all be sued as well basically like yeah Whoa. there's nothing that they've shown that they've actually can prove that, that it's that, been deceptive that it's been deceptive yeah. because they say they also say things like selectively edit that's like, opinion selectively edit is something that it is obviously going to happen with mm. any video that you watch especially if it's not live yeah. it's selectively edited mm -hmm. for Christ's sake yep it's not deceptive. Especially edited. if so, right? Like the like, especially when you're trying to give people a lot of information in a short amount of time. Yeah. Right. You're trying to say, okay, like there's a lot of breathing, a lot of this, a lot of dead space that you don't need. Yeah. So they edited it, but they didn't deceptively edit it. Yeah, and you know, all this can be avoided, as James O'Keefe would say, if you just stuck to the facts. Just stick to the facts. Like the truth. I know you have a vendetta against actual journalists, like that do real journalism. Like when I thought of journalists as a, as you know, young guy, I always did think of that. Uh, you know, they're hiding in a mailbox, mm -hmm. or they 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 dress up like a, a hot woman and try to get the hot story. You know, like that's real journalism. Yeah. you have to let their guard down before you get some truth. Or you go to Bohemian and that's Grove. What, that's well, shit. That would be great if you can get in there and some show some shit. But Project Veritas is doing. They're doing a good job. They're doing wonderful journalism. Probably the best journalists that are out there right now. And whether or not they are conservative or not, they never said if they are conservative, yeah. if they right lean or not. They go after both parties. Yep. Matter of fact, some of that voting fraud stuff that they were uh, showing. It was for the right. There was, yeah, there was one for a guy in San Antonio who mm -hmm. was a Republican. Mm -hmm. If they're right leaning pundits. If th they wouldn't have showed that. They, yeah, they would omit that. Yep. Uh, as I'm sure that. Many outlets on the left omit lots that, of And that bitch got arrested. We covered that shit. That bitch did get arrested. Yep. Rachel something. All right. We're done for the day. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like our content, feel free to give us a like on Facebook, on YouTube, and all the others. You know the thing. We're you know on Spotify, thing. iTunes, and on your favorite podcast network. Apple Maps, Google Maps. Uh, I don't think we're on those maps. Yeah, so. you know, you can get our voices, download our voices. That would be pretty sweet. We should do it. Turn left. Turn left. Hey, 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 hey turn left on the thing, you know. You know the thing. <laughs> oh, oh, you missed your oh. turn. Turn around. Oh, uh, toboggan. All right. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, and I think in two weeks we'll try to do a 200th oh, show, oh, special oh, show. Oh, you're uh, you're not going to be here, right? Like, uh, when, what, what week you're not going to be here? We'll run a rerun. Uh, I think it's the s the weekend of the 16th. Uh, and that's still like a month away. Yeah, we're still, uh, yeah. It's uh, like four four shows away. Yeah, All right, so we'll be able we'll to do the, the 200th episode. Um, we'll rerun in four weeks. And laugh. Um, so that's great to have a nice Friday off. We'll run a rerun. Uh, yeah, anything else, boys? I think that's it, man. All right. Uh, tomorrow, we're playing putt-putt at uh, Peter Pan's Mini Golf. Hey. Be there 4 o'clock. Uh, for Nick Ryder, uh, host of the Rewatch Party. He His birthday is tomorrow, and we're going to celebrate with him by hey. showing him our thing of two of how to fucking mini golf. How to put put. You should go, too. I got a, I got a thing for church tomorrow at it's 2. It's at, like, 4. I, we have it at 2, so if it ends early, I'll probably stop by. Sweet. Because we're trying to have a nice day out tomorrow. Nice. Yeah, me, too. I, you know, all my, my damn weekends are getting... I can't do anything. I have when I wake. I have to wake up early tomorrow to do the kids' uh, soccer game. Ooh. So we watch. We uh, watch and help the soccer game out, and then uh, we got that thing happening. And then the next day, I have the rewatch party recording. Mm -hmm. Got oh some bonsais. Boy. 
I don't have time to do shit anymore. I know, bro. I feel you, man. All getting day, work all my ass off all fucking day, come home, water the plants, do this, do that, and then get, fucking... Getting get old makes you fucking do some shit. I just don't have enough time to have fun or do nothing. Yeah. I think that's what I want to do. I just want to have time to do nothing. Lay around, do I shit. I don't want to have plans. Don't want to sit there and just watch TV, even though I'll probably do a lot of mm-hmm. it. I just want to sit there and not have anything planned. No obligations. So uh, yeah, that's why we record, rewatch two at a time, so we can try to bank up enough to take a month off. Hell yeah. That's how to do it. Too bad we can't do that with this show. You I know, mean, we but can. We can't. We're too top. We're, we're literally a topical show. Like We, we are. Like that's true. We got to cover the topics. Everything we on. talk about comes from yeah. within the week. Yep. And I've done it. I've done where, where I've gathered news, and we didn't get to it, right? And then you can't talk about it the next week. Because it's already old news. It's already old yeah. news. Yeah. The news cycle works so fast in this You remember that town. sunny episode about fucking the news cycle being quick? Yeah, the news. Yeah. The fucking uh, Wolf Cola. The, the next new thing. Re- yeah, the yeah. Wolf Cola. <laughs> every, it resets every time you fuck up. All right. Thank you, Do guys. You once bitch. again. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for David uh, Exactly Aguilar for Brandon the Heart of Mitch Umlos. My preferred adjectives are magical and wonderful. We'll see you guys next week.